Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling something that might seem small but makes a world of difference in language learning. Pronunciation. Mm -hmm. You know that feeling when you're trying to follow a conversation and just can't quite make out what's being said? Yeah. We're giving you the tools to overcome that hurdle and sound amazing doing it. It's amazing how often we get so caught up in vocabulary lists and grammar rules. Yeah. We totally forget about this fundamental piece. It's true. It's like spending hours baking a cake and then forgetting the frosting. You might technically have cake, but something's definitely missing. Right. You've given us some really fascinating research and articles about this, so let's dive in. One thing that really stood out was just how important pronunciation is for clear communication. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty intuitive, but what makes this connection so powerful? You're right. It does seem obvious on the surface. But think of it this way. Clear pronunciation isn't just about getting your message across. It's about building confidence. When you feel good about how you sound, you're more likely to participate in conversations, use the language actively. And that active use is where the real learning magic happens. Yeah, it's like nailing a presentation at work. Suddenly you're eager to present again. Exactly. The material also mentioned that good pronunciation actually helps you understand spoken language better, which I thought was super interesting. How does that work exactly? Imagine you're learning a new dance move. <laughs> Once you've mastered the steps yourself, you can pick them out more easily when others are dancing. Right. right. It's the same with language. When you improve your pronunciation, you're essentially training your brain to recognize those specific sounds in everyday speech. So I'm basically turning my brain into a finely tuned sound identifying machine. I like it. Yes. It, this reminds me of that classic example in the material with bear and bear. <laughs> Same sounds, wildly different meanings. Yeah. I bet there are tons of examples like that, right? Absolutely. Think of right and right or C and C. Mm -hmm. These are what we call minimal pairs. Words that sound almost identical, except for a tiny pronunciation shift. Wow. They demonstrate just how much weight each sound carries in conveying meaning. It's like those optical illusions where your brain flips between two images. Just a tiny change completely transforms the whole picture. Yeah. But good pronunciation isn't just about nailing individual sounds, is it? There's more to it than that, right? You're spot on. The material dives into this, too. It's also about things like word stress intonation that rise and fall of your voice, and even the rhythm of the language. For example, take the word record. Stress the first syllable, and it's a noun, like a vinyl record. Stress the second, and it becomes a verb to record something. Okay, that's a really good example. And this is where I think the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA, comes in handy. Exactly. It's not about memorizing the whole chart. But having a few key symbols as a reference can be a game changer. Like, did you know that the sound in English, like in think, is represented by the symbol, it helps to see the sounds visually. It makes it so much less mysterious. So we've covered WHY pronunciation matters, confidence boost, clearer communication, and even better listening comprehension. But now the big question, how do we actually improve? What are some concrete steps we can take to level up our pronunciation game? Because the material you gave us is packed with practical tips, which I love. It really is. And the best part is you don't need any fancy software or expensive equipment to make progress. Okay. A lot of the techniques emphasized in the material are things you can start doing right now. Music to my ears. I'm all about that accessible learning. So where do we begin our pronunciation power up? What's step one? It all starts with active listening, but not just passively listening in the background. Right. Think podcasts, audiobooks, even music in your target language, but with intention. Tune into how native speakers are pronouncing words, the rhythm they use, the intonation, all those subtle details we talked about. So it's like being a detective for sound, really dissecting what you're hearing. Exactly. And just like training for a marathon, consistency is key. Yeah. The more you expose yourself to the sounds of your target language, the more your brain starts to internalize them. Makes sense. And speaking of training, the source material mentions a technique called shadowing. What is that exactly? Shadowing is basically listening to a native speaker and trying to speak along with them simultaneously. Oh, wow. It can feel a bit strange at first, almost like you're dubbing over them in real time. I can imagine, but I can see how it would be effective. It is. It's like a workout for your mouth muscles, training them to mimic the natural flow of the language. And speaking of practice, one technique that often gets overlooked is recording yourself speaking. Ooh, yeah. That can be a little scary. It feels like something you'd do in a language class, not necessarily on your own. I know it can feel a bit awkward at first, 
But the goal isn't to sound perfect. It's to identify areas where you can improve. Okay. Maybe you struggle with a particular sound or your intonation feels a bit flat. Try recording yourself reading a passage in your target language, then compare it to a native speaker. It's like holding up a mirror to your pronunciation, helping you pinpoint those areas that need a little extra attention. Okay, I'm starting to see how that could be really useful. It's like taking those cringy old photos of yourself. You might not love looking at them, but they show you how far you've come. Exactly. And here's another technique that can be su surprisingly effective. Tongue twisters. Okay, tongue twisters. I have to admit, those always make me think of childhood games. Are those really helpful for adult language learners? Absolutely. They might seem a bit silly, but they're like, targeted exercises for your articulator muscles, your tongue, lips, teeth, all those parts that work together to create specific sounds. Right. Think of them as pronunciation boot camp. I like it. So instead of bench presses, we have she sells seashells by the seashore. Exactly. And just like any workout, the more you practice, the stronger those muscles get. You'll find yourself stumbling less and navigating those tricky sounds with more ease. So we've got active listening, shattering, recording ourselves, and tongue twisters, all great techniques for building muscle memory for pronunciation. But I imagine nothing can quite replace actual conversations with native speakers, right? You're absolutely right. The material emphasizes this too. It's one thing to practice in isolation, but there's a certain magic that happens when you start using the language in real-time conversations. It's like the difference between reading about swimming and actually jumping in the pool. You can study all the techniques, but nothing beats that immersive experience. Exactly. And in conversations, you pick up on so many nuances that you might not find in textbooks. Things like slang, colloquialisms, even just the natural rhythm and flow of everyday speech. Right. You start to get a feel for how the language is actually spoken, not just how it's written in a textbook. This all makes me think about the role technology can play. I mean, we've got all these amazing language learning apps and software now. What are your thoughts on using tech to improve pronunciation? We were just talking about all the cool tech out there for language learners. Yeah. Are there any tools in particular that you find really helpful for pronunciation practice? Oh, absolutely. We're living in a golden age for language learning tech. Right. One of my favorites is speech recognition software. Okay. You'll find it in apps like Duolingo, and babble, they can give you instant feedback on your pronunciation, mm. which is so valuable. Right. It's like having a pronunciation coach in your pocket. <laughs> I remember using those apps and being amazed by how accurate they were at picking up on even tiny errors. Mm -hmm. It was a little humbling at times, but so helpful. I agree. Those apps have come a long way. And don't underestimate the power of simple voice recording apps either. Yeah. You can track your progress over time, comparing your earlier recordings to your more recent ones. It's so motivating to hear how much you've improved. I love that. It's like a visual representation of all your hard work paying off. Okay, but we can't forget about the fun stuff too, right? Right. The material also talked about using music and movies for pronunciation practice, which I'm all about. What are your thoughts on that? Those are some of my favorite ways to learn. Music mm -hmm. is incredible because it really emphasizes rhythm and intonation. Oh often in a really catchy and memorable way. Yeah. Find some songs you enjoy in your target language, look mm -hmm. up the lyrics, and sing along. You'll be surprised by how much it helps your pronunciation without even feeling like work. It's true. I learned so many song lyrics without even trying. What about movies and TV shows? I imagine those are great for picking up on natural pronunciation, too. Absolutely. They're fantastic for immersing yourself in the sounds of the language as it's spoken naturally. A good tip is to start with subtitles in your native language then gradually switch to subtitles in the target language as you improve. Don't be afraid to pause and rewind to really focus on how certain words or phrases are pronounced. It's like creating your own personalized language lab. Right. So we've talked about a lot of different approaches, active listening, shadowing, recording ourselves, tongue twisters, conversation practice, using tech, and even incorporating music in movies. That's a lot to choose from. Yes. For those who might prefer a more structured approach, the material also mentioned pronunciation classes. That's right. And there's absolutely no shame in seeking out expert guidance, especially when it comes to something as nuanced as pronunciation. Right. Classes can provide that personalized feedback and structured practice that some learners really thrive on. And it's a great way to connect with other learners, too. So ultimately, it seems like the key takeaway here is that there are so many different ways to improve your pronunciation. It's all about finding what works best for you and your learning style. You nailed it. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. 
The most important thing is consistency. Yeah. Even dedicating just 10 or 15 minutes a day to focused practice can make a huge difference over time. I love that small, consistent efforts can lead to big results. And as we wrap things up, I think it's important to reiterate something that resonated throughout the material. Mm. It's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. In fact, it's an essential part of the process. Exactly. Embrace those mistakes, learn from them, and keep practicing. Don't be afraid to experiment, to play with the language, and most importantly, to have fun with it. So true. It's all about the journey, not just the destination. And speaking of the journey, here's a final thought for all of you to ponder. We often get caught up in the idea of achieving perfect pronunciation. But have you ever noticed how people with different accents or dialects can still be perfectly understood? That's such an important point. Communication is about so much more than just sounding a certain way. It's about connecting with others, sharing your thoughts and ideas, and experiencing the world from different perspectives. Beautifully said. It's about embracing the richness and diversity of language in all its forms. And on that note, we'll wrap up our pronunciation. Ever find yourself like... Um, breezing through English lessons. But then like real life conversations. Totally throw you for a loop. Exactly. It's like you're acing the textbook, but then... Fascinating material on this, focusing on something. Striking out in the real world. Many language learners overlook pronunciation. Totally. We're diving deep into why pronunciation is about so much more than just sounding native. It's actually the secret sauce to unlocking your fluency and confidence. And get this. We've got eight practical strategies to help you do just that. What's fascinating is how many dedicated learners kind of hit this wall. They're crushing it with grammar and vocabulary. But then... I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, tell me about it. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah. It can be really disheartening. You're so close to expressing yourself fully, but then that pronunciation barrier pops up. It's like having a Ferrari with a bicycle horn. The engine's powerful, but the sound just doesn't match up. And as this material highlights, it goes beyond just being annoying. It impacts your confidence, your social life, even job opportunities. Okay, let's break this down. Why is pronunciation so crucial for effective communication? What makes it the make or break element? Think about it. Clear pronunciation equals a clear message. When you mispronounce words, it leads to misunderstandings. Which, let's be honest, are frustrating for everyone involved. Right. It's like trying to tell someone a joke. But they keep mishearing the punchline. Exactly. The whole thing falls flat. On a deeper level, if you're constantly worried about your pronunciation... It chips away at your confidence. Imagine nailing a job interview full of brilliant ideas. But your pronunciation makes it hard for the interviewer to grasp those ideas fully. It's like having amazing ingredients. But messing up the recipe. That's a perfect analogy. No matter how great the ingredients are, the final dish won't taste quite right. If it's not repaired well. And think about it from the listener's perspective. Good pronunciation shows respect for their time and energy. Because it makes it easier for them to understand you. Ultimately, it creates a more enjoyable interaction for everyone. You've given us a lot to think about in terms of why this matters. But how do we actually improve? It's not like we can all become linguistics experts overnight. Don't worry, you don't have to. This material outlines eight practical strategies that anyone can use. Let's dive right in. The first one is focusing on phonetics. I have to admit that word always sounded a bit intimidating to me. I promise it's not as scary as it sounds. Think of phonetics as the instruction manual for your mouth. It teaches you how to form each sound correctly. Just like learning the alphabet helps you read and write. Understanding the sounds of English, what we call phonemes, helps you speak and understand better. So instead of just seeing the word on a page... We're breaking it down into its individual sounds. You got it. The material even suggests you try learning the International Phonetic Alphabet. Or IPA. Don't worry, you don't need to be fluent. But recognizing those symbols can be incredibly helpful. Like a secret code for better pronunciation. And the material mentioned identifying your own pronunciation challenges. Any tips on how to do that? Absolutely. Start by recording yourself speaking. It might feel a bit awkward at first, but trust me, it's incredibly insightful. Okay, note to self. Embrace the awkwardness. What exactly should we be listening for in these recordings? This is where it gets really interesting. Pay attention to the sounds that consistently trip you up. For example, do you struggle with the sounds? Or maybe the difference between L and R. I know those can be tricky for a lot of learners. They're incredibly common. And once you've pinpointed those tricky sounds... You can find targeted exercises online. There are tons of free resources out there. Like a pronunciation boot camp. We're isolating those tricky sounds and giving them a good workout. Okay, strategy number one, conquered. 
What's our next pronunciation power up? Strategy number two is all about using audio transcriptions. These are basically written versions of spoken language. And they can be incredibly helpful. So we're not just listening passively, but actively following along with the written words. You got it. This helps your brain connect the written form of the word with its actual pronunciation. And what's cool is that you start to pick up on those subtle pronunciation shifts, depending on like the surrounding words, like how some words are emphasized more than others in a sentence. Exactly. That's called sentence stress. And it's another key element of natural sounding English. It's like the rhythm of the language. Okay, so we've got phonetics. Those individual sounds. And we've got audio transcriptions to help us with the flow of those sounds. What's our next secret weapon in our pronunciation arsenal? This one might sound obvious, but it's amazing how much it's overlooked. Listening to English podcasts. I'm already a podcast addict, so you're speaking my language. But how does simply listening help with pronunciation? It's about how you listen. Don't just focus on the content. But really pay attention to how the hosts and guests are pronouncing words. Notice their intonation, their rhythm. The way they connect certain words. Immerse yourself in the music of English. So it's like we're training our ears to pick up on the subtle nuances. The melody, not just the meaning. That's a beautiful way to put it. And the more you do this, the more natural those sounds will become to your own ear. Making it easier to replicate them. You've shared some really powerful tips so far. And speaking of powerful, our fourth strategy is all about slowing down. I know personally when I get nervous. I tend to speak a mile a minute. It's a common reaction. But speaking too quickly can really sabotage your clarity. When we rush, we tend to mumble or blend words together. Which makes it harder for others to understand. So how do we combat that need for speed? It feels counterintuitive to slow down when we're trying to improve fluency, right? I know, it feels strange at first. But think of it like this. Slowing down especially initially builds a stronger foundation for fluency. Similar to how mastering basic steps is crucial before attempting complex movements. Okay, that makes sense. We're focusing on quality over quantity, at least in the beginning. Any practical tips for hitting that pronunciation pause button? Absolutely. Start by being more mindful of your pacing. Consciously try to speak a little slower than usual. Focusing on enunciating each sound clearly. So it's by giving each sound its moment to shine. Exactly. And here's a fun one. Try using a metronome or a speech pacing app. It might sound a bit unorthodox. But it can really help you develop a steady rhythm. I love that. It's like adding a beat to your speech. Making it more engaging for the listener. And of course, recording yourself speaking at a slower pace is hugely beneficial. You can listen back and assess whether your pronunciation improves when you take your time. It's like having a pronunciation coach in your pocket. Okay, we're four strategies down four to go. This next one really piqued my curiosity. Narrate your life. It sounds like something out of a movie. It might sound a little strange. But think about it. How often do we go about our day on autopilot? Narrating your actions is like bringing conscious awareness to your speech patterns. So instead of just making breakfast in silence... I'm giving a play-by-play -play of my every move. Now I'm reaching for the coffee cup, carefully pouring the steaming hot coffee. You've got it. It might feel silly at first. But it gets you comfortable with speaking spontaneously. Which is crucial for improving fluency. And since we're already recording ourselves for the other exercises. We can easily incorporate this one into our daily routine. Exactly. Turn everyday moments into pronunciation practice sessions. This is brilliant. I'm definitely trying this one. Well, so far. Strategy number six might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many learners shy away from it. Engage in real-life conversation practice regularly. I can see why people might hesitate. It can be nerve-wracking to put yourself out there, especially when you're not confident in your pronunciation. But I get why it's so important. It's like learning to play an instrument. You can practice scales and exercises all day long. But until you get up on stage and perform for an audience... You'll never truly develop that confidence and flow. Okay, that's officially going on my quote wall. So how do we find those opportunities for real live conversation practice? Not all of us have English speaking friends readily available. You'd be surprised at the resources out there. Look for language exchange meetups or conversation clubs in your area. They're like a social gathering for language enthusiasts. Or if you're more digitally inclined. There are online platforms designed specifically for language exchange. Like having virtual conversation partners. I love that there are so many options available. Both online and offline. Absolutely. It's about finding what works best for you and your lifestyle, right? 
And the more you engage in these real life conversations, the more you'll start to notice your pronunciation becoming more natural and effortless. It's like anything else. Practice makes progress. So what's next on our list of pronunciation power-ups? Speaking of practice strategy, number seven is all about self-assessment. We've already touched on recording yourself. But this takes it a step further. Okay, I'm intrigued. What does this deeper dive into self-assessment look like? This strategy involves recording yourself. And comparing your pronunciation to that of a native speaker. So are we talking about picking a random English-speaking YouTuber? And trying to sound exactly like them. <laughs> While that could be entertaining, it's best to have a more structured approach. Choose a short passage or dialogue from a book or a movie. Something with clear audio from a native speaker. So we're essentially shadowing a native speaker. Recording ourselves. And then comparing the two. You got it. It's like having a personal pronunciation coach. Highlighting those subtle nuances that we might not even notice otherwise. I love this. I could already see how helpful this would be in identifying those areas where my pronunciation might be a little off. And that's the key. Once you pinpoint those areas, you could focus your practice on those specific sounds or words. It's like having a pronunciation roadmap. Guiding you to your destination. Okay, we're down to our final strategy for unlocking pronunciation mastery. Hit me with it. This one might surprise you. Research your mouth and tongue position. We're getting up close and personal with our mouths. In a manner of speaking, yes. We often take for granted how our mouths actually work to produce different sounds. But becoming more aware of these mechanics can make a world of difference. So we're basically becoming pronunciation detectives. Investigating the inner workings of our own mouths. I'm kind of into it. Where do we even begin with this? Thankfully, we live in a digital age with a wealth of resources at our fingertips. Start by searching for tutorial videos on YouTube or educational websites that specialize in English pronunciation. Many language instructors provide really helpful visual demonstrations. Visual learners rejoice. So we're watching how native speakers position their mouths and tongues for specific sounds. And then trying to mimic those movements ourselves. Exactly. And don't underestimate the power of a simple mirror. Practice in front of a mirror so you can get real-time feedback on your mouth movements. It's like having a pronunciation practice buddy who never gets tired of watching you make weird faces. And honestly, sometimes it does feel a bit silly. But the more you practice, the more those movements become second nature. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground here. From the importance of pronunciation to eight incredible strategies for improvement. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I have to ask. Is there one overarching takeaway that we should keep in mind throughout this journey? Absolutely. And it's this. Be kind to yourself. Improving your pronunciation takes time and dedication. Don't get discouraged if you don't sound like a native speaker overnight. It's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Exactly. Embrace the journey, celebrate the small victories. And remember that every step you take is bringing you closer to your language learning goals. So true. And speaking of the journey, I'm curious. What about the role of feedback? The material mentioned seeking feedback from native speakers or language partners. Feedback is invaluable. It's like having a second set of ears. Helping you identify those blind spots that you might not even be aware of. So it's not just about practicing in isolation. But also getting that external perspective to guide our progress. That's exactly. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback from native speakers, teachers, or even fellow language learners. A fresh perspective can be incredibly insightful. And I imagine constructive criticism when given and received with kindness can be a powerful motivator to keep improving. Absolutely. It's all about creating a positive and supportive learning environment, both for yourself and for those around you. I love that. Okay, we've talked about the importance of consistency, patience, and feedback. What else should we keep in mind as we navigate this path towards pronunciation mastery? Embrace the mistakes. Easier said than done for some of us. Making mistakes, especially in front of others, can feel super vulnerable. I hear it. But the truth is, mistakes are inevitable. And they're actually valuable learning opportunities in disguise. They're not failures. But rather stepping stones on your path to fluency. So it's not about striving for perfection. But rather about seeing mistakes as those stepping stones. Exactly. Each mistake is a chance to learn, adjust, and improve. The more you embrace this mindset, the faster you'll progress. It's like that saying. The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. Exactly. And when it comes to pronunciation, the more you're willing to experiment, to take risks, to potentially stumble over a few words along the way, the more you'll develop that fluency and confidence that you're striving for. 
This has been such a motivating conversation. It feels like we've been given a pronunciation toolkit packed with practical strategies and empowering perspectives. And the beauty of it is that it's not just about sounding more native. Although that can be a wonderful side effect. It's about so much more than just the technical aspects of speech. It's about unlocking your full potential as a communicator and a global citizen. You've hit the nail on the head. What's truly transformative is how improving your pronunciation can boost your confidence open up new social and professional opportunities, and deepen your connection with the English language as a whole. It's like pronunciation is the gateway to unlocking a whole new level of fluency and cultural understanding. It's not just about what we say, but how we say it. It really is. And you know what's fascinating is that um, this isn't just about sounding more native. Right. Although that is a nice bonus. Improving your pronunciation actually sharpens your listening comprehension too. It's true. It's like you're training your ears to pick up on all the nuances of the language. It's like uh, it's like when you learn a new word. Totally. And then suddenly you start hearing it everywhere. So to anyone listening who might feel self-conscious about their accent. Remember, it's a badge of honor. It shows how far you've come. Right. But if you were looking to boost your clarity and confidence. Even native speakers can benefit from revisiting these pronunciation techniques. Yeah. It's all about fine tuning that instrument of communication we all use. Absolutely. Every single day. And it's never too late to refine those skills. This has been an incredible deep dive. One thing that really struck me is how much pronunciation can impact professional opportunities. Oh, yeah. Something to keep in mind as yeah. you navigate your career journey. For sure. It highlights how interconnected language culture and even economic mobility truly are. It's not just about sounding good. It's about communicating effectively in all areas of life. Exactly. This has given us so much to think about. So for anyone listening, remember, pronunciation is a journey, not a destination. Be kind to yourself. Embrace those mistakes as stepping stones. And celebrate those small victories along the way. We'll catch you on the next deep dive.